Well, good Sunday evening, everyone. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. I need a sight and sound check, please. Hello, Mike. Well, Mike, I've already uh, I've already put some money in the bank here uh, around six uh, to six thirty. Oh, only about 6.15, I guess. All right. Thank you very much, Al, Anthony. All right. Uh, we're going to look at the week ahead. want to remind everybody that nothing in here, these are examples. They're not, um, they're not meant as recommendation for any stock or security. And their trade ideas are really your own responsibility. And that trading involves the risk of loss of capital. A um, little bit about me. I'm uh, an ex US Air Force fighter pilot, and I have master's degrees in both computers and business. Been an active trader since 1998 and a full time trader since 2009. I'm primarily a technical trader, but I use limited fundamentals. I am moderating a live futures trading room uh, for hit and run candlesticks at the moment. Let's go over the uh, economic calendar, and then we're going to go to the earnings, a little arb review, trade ideas, some questions and answers. And when I get to that, I want to make sure that everybody understands that it's not stock specific. Wait till we hit the plus sign in the room before we do that. And then uh, once we do that, you'll take a look at your stocks. I appreciate your help. And if I miss anything, uh, please bring it to my attention. Here's the economic calendar. We've got retail sales starting again uh, at 8.30. The um, earnings season kicked off on Friday with several of the big banks reporting, including J.P. Morgan. And uh, we got retail sales, Empire State at 8.30, and business inventories at 10. Those could be market moving, positive or negative. Tuesday, industrial production at 9.15, just before the market opens. Housing market and jolts at 10, 30 minutes after the open. Uh, watch for a potential um, reversal in the markets during those time frames or a continuation boom. Then on Wednesday, we've got housing starts at 8.30. Petroleum status report that I usually trade at 10.30. And the FOMC minutes at 2. Uh, we'll get a little insight into what the people were thinking uh, on the Fed and there could be a little bit of a market shakeup uh, going there based on what uh, transpires. Jobless claims at 8.30 and Philly Fed also at 8.30 and then on Friday you get the existing home sales. Um, it could move some of the markets out there. Here's some of our earnings. I've highlighted the ones that I think um, are of note. All of these actually are notable earnings. There are earnings that don't meet my criteria. They might meet yours, but I want to see somewhere in the neighborhood of just under uh, somewhere around 500,000 shares a day or more on average, and anywhere between five and two hundred dollars. More than that, uh, two hundred to two fifty. I just don't see trading that much and um, below five I don't necessarily want to be in those for earnings um, some people will trade uh, as low as maybe 250 or so or even less than that but I'm not going to do a buy and hold I'm going to do a swing or a day trade on most of these and earnings I tend to do mostly day trading um, Bank of America on Monday before the bell uh, after, uh, sorry, before the bell on Tuesday, we've got Goldman Slacks, J and J, Morgan Stanley, and United Health. Um, on Tuesday after the close, CSX, Lab Research, and United Airlines. Um, notable on Wednesday morning, Abbott Labs and U.S. Bank. After the close, United Rentals. United Rentals will give us a pretty good idea of what a lot of the big cap industrial names might be doing. Thursday morning, Philip Morris, Travelers, and Textron. 
After the close, we've got American Excuse, PayPal, and Skechers. And none Friday afternoon, but before the bell, we've got Kansas City Southern, Procter & Gamble, and Slumburger. <laughs> okay. I, I love this little cartoon where they're beating expectations. Okay. Uh, let's go do a market overview. For that, I'm going to sneak on over to... Uh, move it around here so I can find it. I'm going to sneak over here to Think or Swim. Going to be looking at a daily chart. And basically what we're going to see on here is a 3, 8, and 17 exponential moving averages. And a 50 and a 200. And down here below, you're going to see a Stochastics RSI, which is uh, Wilder's 7733. Or in TOS mode, it's 733. Um, the Crude. I'm going to back off to a six-month chart to show you where we are in the big scheme of things. This is kind of a very deep handle on a cup and handle. Stochastics RSI tells me we're going to go up. We are trying to go up here. And I would think that the next level that we need to be concerned about, and I think uh, we're going to touch, is probably around 74 bucks. At 74 that's where I'm going to, um, you know, basically say that it's the fork in the road. And as Yogi Berra used to say, if you get to the fork in the road, take it. And let's look at gold. It started to pop in a little bit last week. I'm going to back off on it a little bit. I may even want to go back a little further. Okay, this is a one-year chart. We were up in the 13s. And then somewhere around, oh, I guess, April time frame, we started to lose it and lose it big. Uh, we've been in a little consolidation mode for a month or so, and now, maybe more than that, um, August, uh, and we're going to probably do march ups to uh, existing levels. I'm going to want to see a higher high and a, and a higher low, and then, so the breakout here above about 1230 to 1240 will give me confidence that we're probably in a new uh, upward trend. Val, are you logged in with one, um, with, o uh, with only one window or two? Because if you woke it, uh, if you log in with two, you can resize the windows. I can't make the charts any larger, right? Even though it says two, I, I kind of know why they say that, but that's that's the wrong way to do it in my opinion. Um, thanks, Ed. You can make it slightly larger so that it just goes on the chart only. But I have to, I have it with two windows. I can resize everything. Okay, great, Val. I'm sorry about that. All right, let's go on over to the S&P. We're basically flat on all the indexes here tonight. I'm going to zoom in here after looking at it. I have the volume at price levels marked. That's what these little uh, skyscrapers are that are sitting on their side. And they basically show me where we had the highest volume at prices. And the lot of volume here was at 27, 25, and we came back and touched it. Um, we just happened to be at the 200 period moving average. Uh, I don't put a lot of credence in those moving averages other than to say that some people might step up there. And I don't use them as trading just to be aware that some people might. All right, what we've done here is we've kind of consolidated for three days. Actually, what I would expect to see out of out of this is we've done our big move down, consolidate a lot, and what we're going to probably get is a some sort of bounce. Now, it could either be a dead cat bounce and form a bear flag and then roll back over, or it could do a zigzag and go higher but it's going to take a long a lot of effort to get back up to 2850 uh, to 2900 the old adage is that we take the stair steps up and we take the elevator or elevator shaft down and this we took the elevator shaft down as soon as we 
basically, as soon as we lost this 2860 level that I have marked here, the selling acceleration uh, accelerated. All right, so I do show that we're going to get a little bit of a bounce here. My first level is about the 50% level, and the other is 80 to 100. Um, I would like to actually deviate one. I meant to show a T2122 four week new high, new low chart before going into that. For those who are in TC2000 and use that, the four week new high, new low ratio. I've, I've watched it for almost two decades now. And I've come up with the um, the pullback zone and the bounce zone. Those are my, my ideas of what they are. If you get above 85 to 95, you're in way, way, way overbought. And 85 to 95% of the stocks are making monthly highs. And if we get to the point where below 20 to anywhere around there, we're in extremely oversold territory where, where about four out of every five are making new lows versus those making new highs. Now, this is on the S&P. We got down to zero back in February and just above zero in April. Those are extreme readings. I have probably only seen those. Um, I don't know that I've seen them more than once or twice since 2009. And every time we got a pretty healthy bounce. We got a little bit of a bounce here. I'm sorry, a, a dip lower and a dip lower right here to about, what was that? Um, that was six, but we got, we're down around 1.4 to 2.0 right now. That is very, very oversold. Will we get a bounce? Yes. The only thing that this thing is, it doesn't tell me how big the bounce will be, so how much higher it will go to price. And that blue line here is the S&P 500 cash, the SPX. And it doesn't tell me how long the rally is going to be. It just says be careful with shorts and maybe be ready for a counter trend trade if you are so inclined. I normally am not all that at Amor would do at a counter trend trade, but of the shorts that I'm on, I make sure that I get out and I, it tells me when to stop shorting. And when it gets up here, it tells me be cautious, you know, sell at the first sign of weakness. We had a divergence at the top and we had a divergence here, uh, well, a continuation to the downside on the bottom, starting really. Um, mid to late um, September. So we had plenty of warning that we were going up here on fewer and fewer, uh, basically on fumes, fewer uh, stocks making monthly highs. All right, let's take that away. I'll come back to that in a little bit when we start looking at charts. All right, uh, let's go down to the NASDAQ. We're down 10 in in the overnight session so far, but that's uh, actually the NASDAQ had the strongest bounce so far. Now, a 50% level here around 72, 25 to 30. This little um, volatility stop will tell me if we get above that, we can uh, do a rally. The volume at price level is way up here around 7,400 and, and change. So we have a long ways to go before we repair ourselves, but uh, it's going to take a while. Now, this little dash line you see right here on the three month, that's also the 100 day simple moving average. I, while my son was going to school up in Northeast, um, I was able to visit him and met with some parents who were hedge fund managers. And we talked about trading and stuff like that, and what I did and what they did. And a lot of them kind of poo-pooed the idea of a 50. They would use 100 because they said there was a lot of overshoot. And they would look at the 100 period moving average and the 200. So um, I started plotting that 
it's a minor thing just to be aware of. And you noticed when we started our sell off of the NASDAQ, we kind of wobbled there at the 100. And we were at the ES, let me go back to that. We blasted right through it. So it did, it, these things do not necessarily act as support or resistance. But in some cases, they will cause a pause. Could that have been more of the fact, not the 100, but the volume at price level? And people were stepping up there? I think so. All right, let's go look at the Russell. It's basically flat. It's only down 20 cents. Uh, I'll give me get that in a second there, SP. Um, let me back off a little bit here on the Russell. I'm going to back off to a one year. See the volume at price levels here? And the volume point of control here is all the way down to 1550. This is the area that I would expect to see long-term support. All right, let me finish the YM and I'll come back to your question there, SP. There's the Dow. Volume of price, 24,730-ish. And it moves up a little bit. I guess we're down a little bit when we uh, zoom in just a little bit. We're kind of wobbling around the 200 right here. I wouldn't be surprised if we bounced. We've got to get above this little uh, the volatility stop there or go down here and retest and do a blowout. Uh, the volume was pretty health, uh, pretty substantial on Thursday. So there is the possibility that we've already had our blow, uh, blowout and blow off. All right, I was talking about the NASDAQ, and, you were, and I mentioned something about about a 50% retrace. And it was kind of eyeballing this last section here. That's all I'm using. Basically, the volume price control at 74.16. Let's call it 74.20. And we went down to 7,000. So half of that would be about 220, 7220. And that's about where the volatility stop is. Now, some people would use 76, 75, and I can see that. I don't use a lot of uh, fibs except as an approximation. And I'm more concerned about the last move here. We had a move down, we didn't get a, move, uh, a bounce, and we moved down. About this half level, 72.25, and if we get above that, then I'll start worrying about the 50% off the big move. And I bet you that the 50% off this small move is probably somewhere around either the uh, point, point 0.23 or point 0.382 uh, of the big move. So if you wanted to use Fibonacci's off of those, you could do that as well. And Fibs would work well if you don't have any price levels off to the left to compare with. But we've got some, something to compare with here. This 72.25 is about the low here back in July. So that's a point for me to look at and why I'm kind of uh, sticking with what I just said. But there's nothing, it's not written in concrete. It's in concrete jello. All right, the VIX, I'm going to go out to one year and show us we had our spike in the February sell-offs up to the 40s. Then we had a rebound spike in March and again in late March, early April. And those got up to the, about the 25 level. We exceeded that a little bit on this move. But I think this the VIX will actually start to settle down a little bit. It's like throwing the... Um, throwing the stone in a very small pond you got to get ripples yeah the uh, volume of price levels let me go over to a one where we can see it quite quite well i'm just on the dow here for the futures uh, i trade stocks and options with think or swim and i trade uh, futures with um ninja broker I do not recommend using Thinkorswim for futures. It's it has some problems with the charting and being slow, and the commissions are too high. All right, going to studies. 
I'm going to edit studies since I've already got it here. And what I'm using is the volume profile. And we use the volume profile. I'm using everything with that's standard out of the box except for one setting. And this on expansion needs to be set to no. If you set it to yes, it shows up on the right hand side away from the chart. And you can't necessarily get an overlay. I like the overlay and I set the uh, opacity way down. That's another thing that I will do is um, opacity about 30 or less. I, if I can see it myself a little bit better, but I had to move the opacity up to 30 from 20 or to, uh, 25 so that you guys could see it while I'm projecting. Does that answer your question there, uh, NB? They work. They work. You're welcome. They work very, very well for the futures and for the S&P 500 stocks, mainly the big traders. And some of the cues that, you know, the, the Apples and Microsofts of the world or whatever, they, the ones that trade really high volumes, it works as well. All right. Back off here. Pull this out of the way. And let's go on to the trade ideas. All right, the trade ideas I've already posted. Let me post it again. Uh, there's the economics. Whoops, I just killed it. Silly boy. Give me a second. Hit the wrong button. Okay, trading, earnings. All right, and close that. And let's go over here and look at trade ideas. All right, there's not 20 of them there. There's more than the 10 that I promised. Uh, I am not going to, I'm going to have some that are kind of marginal and some that are going to work pretty well, uh, I think. So, and then you'll see all the charts by hitting the, uh, um, the little link there from Bitly and also take you out to Finviz. All right, and you'll get all the charts, but I'm going to take them in alphabetical order. ABX, a gold stock. This one actually was had started up before and um, before gold, and kind of was a precursor. One of my favorite gold stocks. I think we're going up here into the 13s. Uh, it does have a strong move here and a consolidation. Yes, uh, on Friday. This is probably more set up for either a long-term breakout or a day trade to get it up at the 13, 13 and a half level. AEM, another one of my favorites. It's just now coming into what is a rounded bottom breakout with a greater than 10% move up to the 200. Somewhere around this $41 level would be my uh, target. With an inter yeah, they're forty dollars to forty one somewhere in that area. Let's uh, mark this up here. It's thirty nine eighty eight on that level, so it's basically forty. Uh, watch for a move over about thirty seven seventy five to thirty eight dollars, and it'll be about a two dollar move. ALDX, biotech, huge move up on gigantic volume. It pulled back to. The breakout level, it was sitting at 8. It went up to 16. Half of that is about 12. We did about a 50% retracement. And I'm going to use the uh, quad lines. 
to set that puppy up. And TC2000 has a thing called quadrant lines. And quadrant lines are basically a lazy man's way to do approximations of Fibonacci's. 50, halfway between the two is about 75 or a little bit less than that would be 6, 0.618. And this is 25% here. If I can eyeball here is approximately 0.382. Kind of thin. ALDX, I'm showing 1.9 million. On the average over the last, uh, now, you're talking about here in the last few days here. Yeah, 300,000 or so. Most of it is on that one day. You're absolutely right. And this is not for the faint of heart. First of all, it's a biotech. And second of all, it had a gigantic move up. I didn't, I didn't necessarily say, but I get, I get your point. Um, this could be a musical chair stock. It's, it's not because based upon, you know, the fact it's not $2 or whatever. This right here is TC2000. Warden Brothers. Um, I swear by it. Not at it. It has some limitations. But it helps me to scan for stocks and to manage watch lists. And that's what it's primarily for. They have a trading um, brokerage right now. I wouldn't recommend that because basically it's using interactive brokers. Why don't you just do interactive brokers and don't pay the middleman? But it's absolutely beats Thinkorswim and almost any program I've seen in managing watch lists. Uh, yeah, that's why, uh, ZD, uh, Doug, if he were here, he'd say, make it get over this 1330 level, uh, which is where the volume point of control is. I tend to not necessarily wait for that level. Although if you do, that's ultra confirmation. I tend to try to, uh, break it a little bit early. You could look in at maybe a four hour chart or a two hour chart and see how this is kind of consolidating there. Or you could even go to an hourly chart. You see, and the idea of 1330 breaking above that, I can see that. But I'm just pointing it out to put it on your watch list. I'm not saying it's a buy tomorrow morning. With all the um, topping tail of the big move. Yeah, right here. I know what you're talking about, which is about 1337. Right there. It just happens to correspond with it. Nothing's in the vacuum. There's all, let's do the uh, two hour chart and see where it is. Now the pullback was 1331 according to the two hour chart. I'm sorry, it, it's things like that jump out at me and I apologize. I didn't slow down and explain what I was doing. Uh, my apologies. Uh, not really. The green dots and the red dots are um, volatility stops. And I've got volatility set up at... What have I got it set up? Okay, volatility stop here. Let me edit it real quick. I've got a two range period look back of 10 periods and the range multiplier, Doug Campbell, one of the moderators in our, uh, uh, in our set of rooms and the King Daddy Rabbit of right way options. He uses about 1.5 and that works for me on anything down to about a 30 to a 15 minute chart uh, above a daily weekly, you probably have to adjust it a little bit, and um, below that, you would definitely have to adjust it as well. So, and it basically shows that if you're an uptrend, you should probably use the, the green dot, and you should lose a um, that as a on a closing basis, not on a um, intraday basis. It's very difficult to hold it though. If it's 
busting right through it. I understand. Uh, okay, let's move on. You consider it as an area, not a, not a uh, point. And to me, it's a nomination of an area of support or resistance. And then I want to look and see where there's price. And BSX is a pretty good example. This is the daily chart. The volatility stop is about 37.34, but when I go to a, the hourly and two hourly chart, it really turns out to be a little bit higher than that. But not by much. But it gives me a starting point. Uh, which one are you talking about on Kimberly? Oh, the quadrant? Sorry, it's called Quadrant Lines over here to the left. It's NTC 2000. Yeah, sorry. It's the way of cheating. And my philosophy is if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. But it's a, it's a quick and dirty way to do uh, rough approximations of uh, pullback. Okay, BSX. We get over here, I think we could go back up to the 39. We pull back to the 50. Relative strength is there. Uh, that would also tell me that I probably want to be looking at other medical device companies and looking at those. That's the other thing that is... <laughs> uh, you should talk about cheating, Mr. Ohio State. Um, okay, let's go look in the uh, sector. It's healthcare, sorry. Uh, let's go look in the industry. Medical devices. And so when I go in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use market cap to sort through those. Medtronic is basically the same as BSX. Ah, there you go, SP. Abbott Labs, they call them, uh, they have, they report earnings, I believe, on Thursday. But Abbott's always been one of my favorites. You could trade this going up in earnings and get out or find some way to buy um, options to protect the downside. Striker, there's BSX, Edwards, eh, I don't like ZBH or Align. This is medical devices, but it's teeth. Uh, I mean, man, we're getting to the small ones now. And so I wouldn't be looking at it. So what I've done is I've just said, you know, if, if I find something that looks appealing, I'm going to also look across in that same sector or industry or the possibility of others that don't show up on my scan. That's another really, really nice feature of TC2000. And if you buy multiple, multiple years and get gold, you get uh, delayed by 15 minutes, but you know, you're using daily charts for your scans. It's 15 minutes. To be honest with you, that's a bargain at $250 a year. About $20 a month. And I put all of my um, all of my watch list in there. It helps me scan for candidates uh, and in multiple ways. Another one out there that's holding on to Cleveland Cliffs Industrial Metals, pretty uh, pretty nice. It doesn't have a whole lot of dollars in it. It does have uh, excellent volume. So uh, this will have to be one that you're going to, if you got in somewhere around the 1230 to 1250 area, you've got to have to expect it to be breaking out. Yeah, two two fifties with data. It's, but it's delayed data. Right. Thanks, Pablo. CME, CME pulled back to the breakout level. Let's see if it holds and curls back up. I probably wouldn't be trying to go long unless I drill down. Let's drill down to a two-hour chart or a one-hour chart. I'd, pro I'd probably want it to break above this 178 level. Yeah. 
and then I mean, tried to play it to go up close to the 180 to 182 level. Oh, I think I know somebody who do that. I use 12.6. Well, I only use 12.6 for the first 30 minutes or so of the, of the day. After that, I'm using uh, version 18 because it's got some capabilities that I like that's not in 12. All right. CRBP. Another biotech. Again, not for the faint of heart. It... It moves about 10% a day, maybe almost 11. And this one will be one that you're going to expect it to go back up into the eights. Probably going to have to be over seven something. GDX, like I said, gold is an area that GDX over 20, going back up here to the 21 to 22 level, won't move a lot. You'd have to buy a number of shares. To make some uh, dollars in it. GDXJ, same thing. The target level will probably be about 31 from 29.50. That's a little bit better. It has a little more volatility to it. Um, Gold Corp, GG. It has a little bit of resistance here around 11.5, but the real resistance probably around more than the, than the 12s. GLD. For those who don't trade the gold futures, it is a rounded bottom breakout, which would notion notionally would say you would want somewhere around 121 for a target. That would want it. That would make it want to go back up to this level here that we had in June. I'm not sure it's going to do that. At least not in a straight line. But if one put people want to nibble a little bit, the other level that I use between there and there's my 100 period moving average, I've noticed that there's a significant difference, distance between the 50 period uh, SMA and the 200 SMA. Look where the 100 is and see if you can find an area around that, like maybe 116 and a half. The other one we got here is IntelSat. How do I pick one, one what, ZD? You talking about pick one to one gold stock? I don't. You, you get a, you get a mixture. You buy a hundred to 200 shares or two or three of them. They, they're probably all going to go about the same. Um, if you want a basket, you buy GDX or GDXJ. Mine would be GDX because it uh, J because it has a little more volatility to it, two and a half percent versus well, it says two and a half percent. They're about the same. But then, if you want a little uh, pop, bang for your buck, you may want to get something that's lagged a little bit, like AEM. Each has its uh, pros and cons. Intelsat do it is looking like a potential J hook here, and a J hook being move up, pull back, preferably fifty percent level or less, and then a move up, and your first checkpoint would be a prior swing. So this would be the move up, and do the pullback. This right here looks to be about a uh, 0.382 retracement, and then I move up. And when it got to 34, I'd make sure that it actually was a breakout. And here, if I was kind of interested to find out whether it did a, what kind of pullback it is, I do the quad lines, or I could come out here and do. Fibonacci's and there's a 0.382 just a little bit more than that there's a 0.5 and there's a 0.618 you probably do get more movement in an individual stock rather than a basket TJ but you also have single stock risk so that's why I said pick your poison. 
Uh, about ready to get that. There's J Nug. Anything move over about nine nine and a quarter could potentially go up to eleven and a quarter. I think I'm going to alphabetical order. Molina Health. Uh, reports on 11.1, so it still has a couple of weeks. We could get a rally here. It's right around the 50. I'd make it break this 143 to 14, sorry, 144 to 145 level. And there's Nugget that you were talking about. You're right with me there, Pablo. And it got up to a prior level around 15.75. And a reasonable target would be around 19.50. So more leveraging there. You could do that, or you could go at an individual stock like AEM and do options. Uh, let's go here to pizza. For some reason, Papa John's Pizza, there's a lot of interest in the last couple of weeks. I don't know. Any, I didn't see any news, and it doesn't report until the 30th, but there's a whole lot of interest in it. Maybe... Maybe there's a leak or something like that. I don't know. Give me one second, CB. Uh, the problem with pizza, it's in this area of congestion right now. Most of the move is probably done unless you can get over 55 to 56. And then you might get a move up to the 60s. Virtue Financial, VIT. V-I-R-T. Basically, it's uh, going to be in a gap above 23.50, uh, moving probably pretty quickly to 25 and a half. It reports on 11.6. And last one of mine here is Xilinx. Uh, yes, you're right. I hadn't heard anything recently, is what I was saying. Uh, no. But then again, I'm not following it that closely. Xilinx came back to the break, old breakout level. And we retested it. And now I think we probably got to get over 78 for a move up to 83. As you can probably tell, out of these 18 stocks, there's probably only about two, say maybe three or four, that are really, really good setups. The rest of them, they've got some work to do before they can be good, good setups. And if the market rolls over and goes south, those won't work at all. In fact, if the markets go back south, most of these will probably not work. The only way that ones will fight the, the crowd, so to speak, and swim upstream and be successful at it is earnings. And what we probably want to then do is look at and I'm going to look at 10-15. There's only a couple here. And before I go into these, I want to go back up and answer CB's question. Okay. How do I best do that? All right, these here, this is, this is inside uh, version 18. You can actually have scans as column settings. This is my setup and criteria for a J-hook. So if I wanted to go back here, let me show you where I look at it. Let me go to my personal list, all stocks and ETFs. I've combined them together. So I get all the ETFs and all the stocks in one chart. I deselect the scan and it gives them regardless of volume or price. And I go over here and left click on it and it sorts them. And I also have one over here that is my Stochastics RSI curling up from the bottom and it draws a green line there. So what it does is it highlights those. Take care, Judy. ALDX, we covered Intelsat, VSX. We've got Cliff. You can see all the ones came up here. Those were 
Those were the first two were J hooks. The rest of them were potential for that. Then we get things like Agilent. Well, let me go down here to one that. Uh, let's see. I try to find a. Uh, Trying to find a really small one. No, 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 no. Yeah. All right, here's one that probably wouldn't have popped up. It's still under 500,000 actuant. And I'll filter that out by running this scan. And the scan is right here, what I call tradable. I edit it. The price between five and three hundred. Average true range greater than twenty-five because I don't want stuff that doesn't move. And average volume four seventy-five or greater. And it eliminates all the low price stocks or the um, ones that don't move and don't have good enough volume. So it basically says tradable. These are the ones I consider tradable. It has to have enough volume, it has to move, and it has to have the right price range. Nancy, could you wait until we get to that point of the uh, night and ask again? All right. Thank you. All right. So that's where the first one was my J-hook scan. The next one is a variation off of that. And I want to edit that. And it's price history. A little bit different here. Volume is about the same, average for trade, but it's an RBB scan. It looks for the round and bottom breakouts. And so I think something like go go. I think go go would possibly be a go above about six. I want it to get going. MDXG, don't like it. Do the deep pullback, but the markets have pulled back, so maybe it's not. Maybe you keep an eye on it. Uh, Brazil, I'm not so fond of. Camping World, eh. Tesoro. Now, Tesoro is one you might want to keep an eye on. Tesoro. And maybe drill down to a two hour or hourly chart. Maybe take a flyer on it, buy 100 shares, and see what it does. Uh, remind me at the very end, Kimberly, and I'll see what I can do, because it'll take a while. I know I can get it to you, just a matter of uh, digging it out. Okay, so that's what we've got as far as the stocks. I go back to the presentation I've got to do one thing. Where is it? Okay, there it is. All right, before we get into uh, any of the uh, questions and answers, do realize there is a 30-day trial offer for a hit and run and uh, right way options, $14 for 30 days. A bargain, it's two trips to McDonald's or less. All right, I wanna know if there's any non-stock specific questions you have. They were, uh, I know we've got one on the PCF files. Uh, but we're going to hold that to the end. Thanks, Ed. I'll give it a second. I'll take a wet my whistle here. We'll uh, see if anybody has any non-stock specific questions. CB, I, have, I didn't answer all of the uh, questions. I, I don't know how in the world I can... Um, All right, let me do this. I will answer your question by giving you a post. That's the first one, which is the scan for that I use for a uh, J 
J-hook. This is my RBB scan. It's one of them. Sorry, probably the, the one that I use the most. All right, this right here is basically an inverted J-hook. Let me copy it first and then I'll go over it. Sam, I'm not sure. Ed, do you know if there's one out there? These are just the V-stops. This right here is just the volatility stop. So I get a dot, whether I have uh, above the volatility stop, a red dot from below it. This is the balance of power, um, greater than 30 or so. And... These would be an average daily volume. Next earnings, so I could do a sort. I'd like to, you've already seen me use capitalization now once. Uh, price, sometimes I'll sort out for price. Uh, don't use dividend yield that much anymore. Um, this is uh, the Doug's EMA, 34 EMA trending for 20 days basically a month um, and you there's actually a condition that we got in there and the last one I've got in here is a blue ice failure now there are three of them in here it says that's a blue ice it fits the criteria but it really isn't and this one really isn't. And what a blue ice failure is, is, well, it basically did this. It's already done its blue ice. It broke through the 50, does a bit of a rally towards the 50 again, and then drops all the way to the 200. So this right here was a classic blue ice failure. I have no idea. I don't trade um, using TC2000 at all. I would never do that. I would never recommend it. And if you're trying to do very, very high frequency type trading or something like that, Sam, um, I don't think this is a platform for you. Personally. I do something like Trade Station, Ninja Trader, or something like that. Okay. I've never heard of Fusion, but uh, okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, let's open it back up then for... I think I... Can, oh, wait a minute. Is it... There might be... Oh, no. Don't... Ed already posted that one. What the RBV and we got Kimberly. So let's go one symbol and one symbol only, or we'll be here all night. And I will cut us off at some point. My voice will probably run out. All right, Nancy, you're patiently awaited for the line. Thank you very much. All right. If you're talking about a long, which I'm going to assume, I don't see very many longs out here in the market. And that's because of the criteria that I have before I will go long. And 
and that is I need to see a move up, a pullback, and I see I need to see higher highs and higher lows. If it doesn't have that, I'm probably not interested in it. All right, as far as the line goes, we have the downtrend here. And if you notice, my 8 and my 17 exponential moving averages, Nancy, will pretty much draw the trend line for me when I look at both of those. And that's what I use my moving averages for. The 8 and the 17 for me are primarily for visualization of the trend. When they're both in parallel with one another, which they are, the trend is down. Another way to look at it is using the 8 and the 17 exponential moving averages and no price. It's going down. Was that in? Yeah, that's on a daily chart. Sorry. Daily, yes. Okay, is it trying to rebound? Yes. What would make it a possible long? Converting back up. Whoops, it did it again. I was too fast. Good Lord. Excuse me. Screen draw. Okay, now it's got the green. So here's the downtrend. I'd want to move back up at least above 340 or so. And then I'd like to have a retest of that 340 to 335 level and then go higher. This is what we're going to have to see. And the reason I'm spending so much time on it, most of the stocks in the market are going to look like a line. They're going to have a downtrend. You're going to need to break that downtrend, come back and and form some sort of support level, and then go up. All right. Let's look at Weight Watchers as a possible short. Well, it didn't crash with the markets. Um, it's coming up to... resistance levels if it goes back up here it tests and then rolls back over maybe I think there might be other ones um, Mike that might be better that maybe that had a big down move ie a line if a line should come back up here to maybe 340 or whatever it could come back down and retest the lows and I would look for stocks that made a low, do a rebound, and made that low on very high volume. And it'll come back somewhere near that and retest, um, basically do a retest of the double bottom. It doesn't have to be an exact bottom like that. It could be um, a bottom that comes back, say, Goes here, bounces, and comes back there. That would be a successful double bottom here, even though it got down to here. It goes up to there, and it's it proves that it can't go lower. All right. Let's look at GLNG, I believe. So, okay, yeah. G-L-N-G. Um, actually, what I'm kind of seeing here is an inverted cup and handle. Now, maybe, maybe I'm just seeing things. But would you see that as kind of an inverted bowl? Maybe it was here and there. And now all we have to do is see that. Let me show you a, a trick in T Think or Swim. looks at GLNG 
and if I go over there and put a minus in front of it, it inverts the chart. And if we pull back down over to here, that'd be a cup and handle. We train our brain to see patterns. Now, could this be a long? Gosh, I don't know. Maybe, but it's got 27 and a quarter area up to about 29. It's got a lot of overhead resistance. I don't know where the target would be. Walt really wants to look at NVIDIA. Uh, I'm going to assume, Walt, you're looking at it long. Um, the old prior breakout levels were 25, 252 and even now 262. I, I don't like it. I'm going to want, just like I t told everybody um, on, a, on a line, I'm going to need higher highs, higher lows. This is not broken a trend, not even close. So this is not even one to probably have on a watch list yet. This might be one where if it gets back up here to say this level here, 262 or so, it'd be a candidate for a short. Maybe. We'd have to see. But the, like I said, there's probably very few out here that are going to be long candidates. EA short uh, for Bob J. Not unless you get a pretty good bounce. And I'd probably want to see the bounce up here to 112.80, 113-ish. Wouldn't want to see much more than 115. But if you can get up in this area where it was... Where's the box? There's the box. That right there is a kind of a congestion area. I'd want to see it get to there. Punch into the box and then roll over. And I personally would like to see Stochastic RSI get up towards the top and roll over again. But that's just me. Yeah, Steve, um, Mr. O'Neill wrote that book in a different time as well. Um, GLNG started it on 9-14. We're talking four weeks versus six. Okay. I talk about the pattern, but you're right. The guy who invented it or coined it, it wouldn't meet. Meet his criteria. David, I've already covered, covered NEM. Over 33, probably goes to 36. I'd make it break 33, though. Uh, Gwen, what, hey, Gwen, how are you doing? MOS. Mosaic. Now, Mosaic is hung in there very nicely. I like that. Now, would one want to make it break out of 34 first? I'd want to drill down. The problem I've got with Mosaic right now, this is a rough idea, and I'd probably want to make it either break this 33 and a half level or even this 34 area. A really aggressive trade would be a break over 33 and a half knowing that you pay only have 25 cents in it or, or a dollar before it stops. 25 cents to 50 cents. Okay, we're going to cut this off or I'm going to be here too long. I'm going to run out of run out of breath. Sal wants to look at GLPI. 
This one isn't as bad as the others, but you can notice here the 8 and 17 are down. Over 34.50, I might be slightly interested, but it's got all this uh, overhead resistance. Let me draw the... No, let me do a... I heard... Oh, that's a two-hour chart. Sorry. Yeah, it still has the overhead resistance. Now, one of the things I read... Um, yesterday is since we've had this since we've had this uh, kind of mini crash instead of using the daily charts this guy wants to use a three day chart so let's look at the SPX for, for instance so this was a three day chart of what happened he's going to want to trade off of a three day chart maybe of a two day chart the one day chart he says is too fast, but I don't know. You may want to start. Yeah, a really tough market. Even short trade term trading. As Pablo can uh, attest, I had a rough day on Friday. And that was at a very, very short time. Okay, so GLPI in a downtrend, I'm probably going to want it to get back above 35 and a half to 35.75. This, this is a REIT. REITs are, as, as, as interest rates are going to rise, REITs are, let's go, I'm going to assume that you're going to be looking at a longer term hold. There's the weekly chart. It was a good one back here. And this is what I use for longer term holdings. GLPI. We went down. We bounced a little bit. We went down. Why did we turn down over here in uh, September of last year? It was fear of rising interest rates. All right. Now let's look at... Um, All right, this is the SPLV, which is the low volatility, but what also is the uh, interest dividend paying portion of the S&P 500. And you see how it's rolling over. I've got my mother in that, and I probably should have bailed when we did the uh, move the other day. Maybe I'll be able to get out on the bounce. We could get bounce out of here. She will have collected two or three years worth of divvies. See, I pulled back, pulled to the 50, then failed and went to the 200. Classic blue ice failure. Should have been out here. Bad boy. Went to sleep at the wheel. Sully wants to look at Costco. Costco got hit on its earnings. Looks like it's trying to fill the gap. Um, from a technical perspective, are you going to try to trade it or are you going to try to hold it? Let's look at the EMAs. The EMAs are still down. We're going to have to make higher highs and higher lows before the, the trend goes. I would suggest that you go back and look at the Amazon buying wholesale market. See what back happened here. It didn't recover very quickly. Oh, sorry. I'll come back and get it, Mel. My my apologies. This one, they didn't forgive it. Consider the market's going down and it recovered a little bit. It's showing relative strength. Again, make it make higher highs and higher lows. All right, here's your Netflix. Mel, I'm sorry. What do you think I'm going to say? Higher highs, higher lows. It's in a downtrend. I'm not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest going long in your, with your money. Oh, going short? Oh, if it got up here to the 50 day around 355, not the fact that it's a 50 day, but it's at the higher, at the uh, prior highs here, swing highs, sure. Let it rally a little bit, though. Don't be anxious. 
you just pointed, you just said Netflix, but you didn't say which way. But I see. And Ricky T wants to look at Walmart. You're welcome, Mel. Well, the good part about Walmart, it didn't crash with the markets. The bad part of Walmart, it's not zooming higher either. Although, no. Keep an eye on Walmart over about 95 and a half to go back up to 100. It will have to break 97.75 though. If you went long on that two hour chart, is it? Yeah, two hour chart, four hour chart then watch what it does when it gets up to 98. Flip cards working out. Good, Rick. Uh, oh, I've got a couple more. Sorry. F Facebook. Well, it did its face plant a long time ago. It's in a protracted downtrend. I'm going to want to see higher highs and higher lows. Could it rally to 165? Maybe, but with a weak market, I wouldn't count on it. There's better ones out there for the candidates, but almost nothing. And Happy Gill wants to look at AC.TO, Air Canada. Again, downtrend, got to break the downtrend, higher highs, higher lows. Sorry to be a broken record. SWN. SWN is chopping around like crazy. Let me go to a weekly and see if I can see anything. It's trying to bottom. Area chart. It's trying to bottom. EMAs. It's trying to top. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's kind of going nowhere fast. In the longer term, it's looking to bottom. In the shorter term, I don't have a direction. All right, I need to go back and... Val, I'm going to let you have CRM real quick, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. CRM had a big bounce. This is a candidate for a failure to go back to, and go back down and retest somewhere near 140 to 138. However, watch if it gets back above this 151. You're welcome. All right. Was it Kimberly that was asking the questions about the PCFs? Are you still here? Okay. Let's Go out there and find it. I have a few of them. Let's see if I've got them in the folder. Okay. Now I'm going to post out. All right, the first one, Kimberly, it, you're welcome, Pam. Uh, two bar high reversal trending down. That's the inverted J hook. The two bar low reverse up, that was for Thinkorswim. Okay, I couldn't see that. Uh, and the trending up is for a bullish J hook. Thanks, Walter. You're welcome. All right, let me see if I've got.
Okay. Um, let me find it. I'm looking, I'm looking. Okay, now found TC2000. PCFs. Those are it, really, for the J hooks there, Kimberly. Getting error on the first one. Let me try it here. Okay, I'm getting an error as well. I don't know why, but sometimes they just go out and never, never land. They work, they work for a while and then they just kind of poof. Let's try this one now. Okay, it's working for me now. Yes, Sal, we were already talking about it. You get it on all of them or just the first one, sir? Yep, the second one's not working either. Let me get it. Okay. Let me add them back in. Uh, gotta get over to it.
universal. We get the one for think or swim. Well, I don't have it in... text form. It's in a doc, not doc. Let me open it up and see if I can save it in .txt. Not everybody will have the latest version. Okay, let's try that again. Sorry it's taken so long, but I haven't been out there to look for them in so long. Okay, do we have any uh, buddy hanging in there looking for any more stuff, PCFs or anything? Otherwise, I'm going to shut it down and uh, call it a night.